Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this next lesson in acids and bases or on acids and bases. Yesterday, I promised you that I would show you a titration, so that's what we're going to look at right now. Um, I just want to check that yeah, this is not going to work for you. So let's watch this. So basically, we're starting off with the titration, and this here is the burette stand that I spoke to you about. That there is Erlenmeyer flask, which is also often called a conical flask. And what they're going to do is they're going to put um, one of the, the probably yeah, they're going to put the solution of the known concentration in this container, and they're busy titrating as it is. And as the liquid titrates, you'll notice that the liquid goes down. It's going to start off at zero, and then you will notice also you can see very easily the 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 and there's the color change there so what they did was they showed very quickly let me just go back for a second um okay let me just pause so basically what happens is you fill up the burette okay so you start off with zero milliliters now what is interesting about the burette is that it reads downwards so as the level drops so obviously you're measuring how much how much volume you're actually adding to the other solution and this would be for example the acid and the solution in the Erlenmeyer flask could be the base or the other way around depending on the strengths of these acids and bases and then what happens is that at the point end point the titration there will be a color change so at the moment they're using something that is clear and it goes a pink or purple so I'm tempted to say it's phenylthaline but I might be wrong so you can see there's a the color change there okay um, and they've measured it and they say, okay, 46.02 milliliters. And guys, a milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. So that makes it very easy for us to convert. So um, 46.02 milliliters of this was added to the other solution. And from that, you could actually then calculate um, the concentration of this, the unknown solution. Um, don't have to worry about that too much, okay? So they're just measuring the temperature to show you that it's an exothermic reaction. Um, and what's quite cool as well is they've got an automatic magnetic um, stirrer, which is very cool. Okay, so that's all you need to know about titrations at the moment. So yeah, okay, so that's what a titration looks like. So now we need to talk about questions um, about these questions, these exam paper questions. So the first question is about the KC, and, I mean KW, which is the same as a KC, except with respect to water. Now, if you recall, before I carry on with the question, do you remember we said that the um, concentration of the, okay, let's say this way. You've got H2O, which is a liquid, plus H2O, which is a liquid, breaks up into H3O plus plus OH minus and both of these were aqueous. So if we had to work out our KW, which is the same as KC, you obviously don't include the liquids or the solids if they were solids because of the fact that their concentration is one. So you end up with KW equals the concentration of the H3O plus multiplied by the OH minus. Okay, but we also said that the KW, similar to the KC, the only thing that affects it is temperature. The only thing that affects it is temperature. Now it says, if, and now, sorry, now normally your KW sits at 10 to the negative 14, because that's where the pH scale comes from. The pH scale is from 1 through to 14, 14, and the reason it's 1 to 14 is because this 10 to the negative 14. Now it says, if water is heated to a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius, the KW changes to 10 to the minus 27. So it changes from 10 to the negative 14 to 10 to the negative 12, 7. And what has happened to the temperature? The temperature has gone up. The temperature has increased. It says, what effect will this change in temperature have on the pH of the water? Well, if we think about this, what effect will it have? Um, okay, so your KW changes is 10 to the minus 12. 
And I said, sorry, write down only increase above seven, decrease below seven, and remain the same. So pH equals the minus the log of the concentration of the H3O plus ions, okay? And this KW is normally 10 to the minus 14, but now if it's if there's an increase in temperature, it's gone down to 10 to the minus 12, which means that it actually has this numbers actually become. Let me explain it to you this way: 10 to the negative 14 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Whereas 10 to the minus 12.7 is actually this it's it's going to be less naught okay so this number is actually bigger so what has actually happened is that the kw has gone up so with an increase in temperature the kw has increased therefore there's going to be more greater concentration of the h3 plus ions and therefore i would say that your it's going to increase above seven so increase above seven now it says, explain your answer in question 7.3.1 using the Shuttley's principle. Okay, well, all we need to say is that by an increase in temperature, we have increased our KW, which means that we've obviously favoured the forward reaction and therefore increased the concentration of the hydronium ions and therefore we've increased the pH. Um, sorry, we've decreased the pH. Okay, right, let's move on. Uh... Sorry, sorry, I mis misspoke. It's not going to increase above seven. It's going to decrease above below seven because it's going to become more acidic. So I don't know why I said increase above seven. I meant that the concentration of the hydronium ions is going to increase and therefore the pH will decrease below seven. So the concentration of hydronium ions is going to increase because of the fact that we're favoring the forward reaction and therefore the pH will increase which means that the I mean that the concentration of H3O plus will increase and therefore the pH will decrease. Okay now let's move on to our next question. Okay so the next question says anhydride anhydrous oxalic acid. Anhydrous oxalic acid is an example of a diprotic acid and thus ionizes in two steps as represented. So you've got COOH2 plus water gives you H3O plus HCEO2 minus and then HCOO2 minus plus H2O goes to H3O plus plus COO2 minus. Okay, so first of all it says what is meant by a diprotic acid? acid. A diprotic acid is one that can give off two hydrogens. That's all it means. Okay, it can give off two hydrogens. Now it says they want the formula for each of the two bases in reaction two. In other words, they want the acid and base and the conjugate acid and base. Okay, so we know that this is giving away a hydrogen. So we know that this is acid one. In order for it to give away its hydrogen, it has to become a base. So this becomes base one. H3O plus is an acid, so it's acid two. And therefore, this has to be its matching base two. Okay, so the formula for the two, ba two bases are going to be H2O and COO2 two, two minus. And then it says the formula of the substance acts as an amphalite in reactions one and two. What is an amphalite? An amphalite is something that can, can act as an acid and a base. Okay, so do you agree we've got water, we've got HCO2 and we've got H3 plus in both of these reactions. So we now need to look at this reaction and decide which is the acid and which is the base and decide what is happening. So I'm going to change color. They've said that this is acid, so this is obviously acid one. And what does it become? It becomes a base one because it is giving away its hydrogen to become a base therefore this must be the acid and this must be the base oopsie base therefore do you see that h 
COO2 minus acts as a base in the first reaction and acts as an acid in the, same, in the second reaction, which means it's an amphalite, and that would be HCOO2 minus. Okay, nice question. Let's move on to this question. This looks like a titration question to me. Let's have a look at it. It says, a standard solution of COOH2 of concentration of 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed is prepared by dissolving an amount of hydrous oxalic acid okay, in water in a 250 cubic centimeter volumetric flask. Calculate the mass of oxalic acid needed to prepare the standard solution. Okay, so in other words, they got the standard solution of concentration this by dissolving this stuff in water in this match. Okay, so we know that concentration is number of moles over volume. Okay, we also know that number of moles is mass over molar mass. So therefore we can rewrite this as concentration is mass over molar mass multiplied by the volume. Now, what do we have? Let's look at it. We've got concentration, mass, molar mass, volume. Okay, so let's think about it. We have the concentration they gave it to us. It's 0, 0,2. The molar mass we can work out using the periodic table. Okay, the volume they gave us is 250 cubic centimeters. So we have to convert that to decimeters cubed. So how do we do that? We divide by a thousand. So that becomes 0, 0,25. And what did they ask for? They said calculate the mass of oxalic acid. So they want this. This is what we want. So the next step is to work out the molar mass of this stuff here. And again, I would like to urge you to please remember to always have your periodic tables with you. Luckily for us, we know that carbon is 12, oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 1. So this becomes very easy. We've got 12 plus 16 plus 16 plus 1 multiplied by 2, there's a 2, plus 2 times Hydrogen is going to be 1 times 2 is 2, plus oxygen is 16. So this becomes 2 times, <clears throat> okay, 16 and 16 is 32, so that becomes 44, 45, plus 2 times 18, and that becomes 2 times 5 is 10, carry 1, 2, 4 is 8, 9, plus... 2 eighths are 16, that's 36, it becomes 126. You guys are welcome to use a calculator. Just for me, this program is sometimes easier just for me to multiply it out myself. So therefore, the molar mass is 126. Okay, so what are we solving for? We're solving for the mass. Okay, it says what mass? So the concentration is 0, 0,2 is equal to the mass over the molar mass of 126 multiplied by the volume of 0, 0,25. So therefore, do you agree that the mass is going to be 0, 0,2 multiplied by 126 multiplied by 0, 0,25. So let's pop that into our calculators. <coughs> and what do we get? We get 0, 0,2 multiplied by 126 multiplied by 0, 0,25 and that equals 6,3 grams, 6,3 grams. And guys, please remember your unit. Okay, if you don't put your unit in, even if your answer is right, you will not get the mark for this. You have to remember to put your unit in. So please, guys, it is very, very important that you remember to put your unit in. Okay, so now let us go to the next question. Okay, so not just the next question, it's the next series of questions. It says, to find an acid in terms of the Brunstad-Lowry theory. Well, that's easy. An acid is a, the acid is a proton donor, a proton donor. Okay, now it says HF plus H2O 
goes to H3O plus plus F minus, okay? It says identify the reactant which acts as a bronsted lowry base. Okay, so if it acts as a bronsted lowry base, oh, <laughs> bronsted lowry base, then it will have to accept the hydrogen, okay? So let's think about this. What is happening, okay? Do you agree that HF is an acid and you therefore it's giving away its hydrogen to the H3O plus to become a base one, which means this is acid two and this is base two. Okay, <clears throat> so now, in other words, H3O plus gave its hydrogen away to fluorine to become water. So that's perfectly correct. So then it says identify the reactant, which acts as a bronsted Lowry base. That would be H2O. Then it says write down the formula, the conjugate acid of the base identified. Well, that's very easy. We've already done it. It has to be the H3O plus. Okay, now it says sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. What do we mean when we say it's an acid? We mean that it ionizes or dissociates completely in water. It ionizes or dissociates completely in water. Now it says calculate the pH of a 0.025 moles per decimeter cube uh, a sulfuric acid solution. Okay, right, so pH equals minus the log, log of H. 3O plus ions, right? So do you agree that when we dissolve this into water, it gives off, when we dissolve H sulfuric acid off, but it's a, it's a strong acid, so it means that it completely dissociates. That means that H2SO4, when it dissolves in water, is going to give you two H pluses plus SO4 to minus. To minus. So what that means is, oh, it's irritating me. Just a second, sorry. So what that means is that for every mole of sulfuric acid, we're getting two moles of hydrogen plus ions, right? So they tell us that we've got 0.025 moles per decimeter cubed of sulfuric acid solution, but it's a ratio of one to two. For every mole of sulfuric acid, we're getting two moles of hydrogen plus ions. And remember the hydrogen plus ions are the same thing as the hydronium ions because it just adds to the water molecule. So therefore, if we have 0.025 moles per decimeter cubed of H2SO4, we're going to have double that. We're going to have double that concentration. So therefore, it's going to give us 0.05 moles of the H3O plus, of the H0O plus. Okay, so then we can just work it out. So therefore, pH is equal to minus the log of 0.05 and we can pop this into our calculator and we go negative log log 0.05 close bracket equals 1.3 so the pH is 1,3. And we should have expected a very low number because we know sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. So that makes sense. Okay, that makes serious sense. Now it says, a certain solution X has a pH of 12.8. Which of these ions, hydroxyl ions or H plus ions is in excess? Well, if you think about it, the pH of 12.8 is quite a basic solution. Okay, let's think about this. A pH scale goes from one to 14. Okay, 1 to 14. 7 is neutral. Everything on this side is acidic. Okay, and everything on this side is basic. And if it's basic, it has extra hydroxyls. So therefore, if it's got a pH of 12.8, which one of the ions is going to be in excess? The hydroxyl ions. Okay, not too bad. Eh? Then it says acetic acid is now added to the solution. Is the pH of the solution going to increase, decrease, or remain the same? Well, 
that is, this is obviously a base, and we're now adding an acid. So what's obviously going to happen to the pH is that it's going to decrease because it's going to go closer towards the 7. I hope this is basically a neutralization that's going to be happening here. Right, now, a learner accidentally spills 15 cubic centimeters of 0.4 moles per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid solution in the lab. Okay, he adds 25 cubic centimeters of concentration 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide to the spilled sulfuric acid in an attempt to neutralize it. So it's taken a strong base and he's added it to a strong acid and he's hoping that it's going to form sodium sulfate plus water. And it says, show by calculations that the addition of the sodium hydroxide solution will not neutralize the sulfuric acid spill. Okay, so let's think about this. What do we got? We've got, um, I like to write it out. So we've got H2SO4 plus 2NaOH goes to Na2SO4 plus water, 2H2O. Okay. What have been given? We've been given 15 cubic centimeters of this. We'll worry about units in a second. At a concentration of 0, 0,4 moles, right? He adds 25 cubic centimeters of this at a concentration of 0, 0,2. And it says show that it doesn't neutralize, okay? So one way of doing this is to work on how much he actually needs to neutralize. Um, so one way is to work out what we actually need to work neutralize. So do you agree? We could say we've got the formula that Na, oh, sorry, let me just fix that. We've got the formula that Na over Nb equals CAVA over CBVB. That's the formula they give you on the formula sheet, okay? So now we know the number of moles and the number of moles of this is going to be a ratio of 1 to 2, 1 to 2. What we're going to do is we're going to see if this amount here, okay, the 25 cubic centimeters is enough to um, neutralize the sulfuric spill. So we're going to take the concentration of the acid, which is 0, 0,4, multiplied by the volume of 15 and then we're going to take the concentration of the sodium hydroxide at 0, 0,2 and then we're going to work out VB. That's what we're going to work out. Okay, so do you agree 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.2 is just 2? So this is 15 multiplied by 2. So then we've got 1 over 2 is equal to 30 over VB. So I can immediately see that we need a lot more of the sodium hydroxide, but let's show you how it is. We're going to work it out. So we're going to go, well, if that's the case, we can cross multiply and we can go VB is 30 times by 2, which is 60 cubic centimeters. So the volume of sodium hydroxide we actually need to to neutralize the sulfuric acid spill is actually 60 cubic centimeters and we only use 25 cubic centimeters. So no, we are not going to neutralize the sodium hydroxide for the, because of the fact that we haven't used enough. Okay, easy, huh? Hey? You just have to think it through. Okay, okay, it's not super easy, but it's definitely easy enough that we can actually work it out if we take it baby steps. Right, we've got sulfuric acid is a strong acid and again an example of an acid which can donate two protons per molecule. It says write down one word or term for the underlined phrase. So what is the underlined phrase? It says an acid which can donate two protons per molecule. So two protons gives you the phrase diprotic, diprotic, okay? Why? Because di means two and protic stands for the protons. So it can give off two protons, therefore it is diprotic. Okay, now it says the equations below represent, K 
Okay, the equations below represent the ionization of sulfuric acid. So we've got sulfuric acid plus water gives you H3 plus plus, plus HSO4 minus, right? Equation two reads HSO4 minus plus water gives you H3 plus plus SO4 minus. Now it says write down the formula of a species that acts as an amphalite in the above reaction. So you can see these type of questions come up over and over and over again. And you just need to practice them, okay, and to make sure you can do them. So in order to work this out, what is an amphalite? An amphalite is something that works as an acid or a base. It can be both, okay? So they obviously want one that is working as both. And now see there we've got sulfuric acid, water, and H3O plus. No, for the first reaction we've got H2O, H3 plus and HSO4 minus. In this reaction, we've got HSO4 minus, H2O and H3 plus. So those are all the same. So we're actually going to work out what the acids and bases are in both of these reactions. And then we can work out which one's the amphalite. Okay. So we've got that this is an acid because they tell us. I mean, sulfuric acid is obviously an acid. And an acid gives away its hydrogen to become a base. So that's B1. Obviously, if that's a base, then this is going to be an acid, so that's A2, and then this is the base. All right. Now, let's look at HSO4 minus, da, 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 da. so let's look at this one. In this one, this is still the acid, okay, and it gives away its hydrogen to form SO4 to minus, that's the base. This, therefore, is still the acid, okay, that's SP2, and gives away its hydrogen to this, therefore this is the base. Right, so we need something, so do you agree this water is a base here and a base here, the h 3 plus is an acid here and an acid here, but the HSO4 minus is a base in the first reaction and an acid in the second equation, so therefore it is an amphalite. The correct, correct answer is HSO4 minus and grade 12 you need to be so careful when they ask you for the formula you have to give them the formula when they ask you for the name they have to give them the name do not give them the name when they ask for the formula and vice versa you will get it wrong okay you have to follow the instructions now it says write down the name of the conjugate base of the hydrogen sulfite ion okay so this is the hydrogen sulfite ion, its conjugate base is sulfate, sulfate, okay, and no, that isn't a typo on my part, remember what I said to you, apparently the international um, organization or national union of people in physics and chemistry have decided that in their wisdom that sulfate can now or should be now be written with an F instead of a PH. So sulfur is with an F, sulfate is with an F, okay. Admittedly, there are lots of people and lots of teachers that are still writing with the PH. There's no problem with that. But please understand that your textbooks from now on will start being printed with an F. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now we're getting to titration. It says a learner, a learner. Um, I should just check if I did all the questions on that one. Yes, I have. A learner adds an impure sample of sodium carbonate into um, this into a flask containing 50 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid solution of pH is equal to zero. Okay. The hydrochloric acid is in excess. It means it's got more than enough. The balanced equation of the reaction takes place. You get sodium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid gives you sodium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. It says calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid are present in the flask. Okay. So it says, let's go through this. A learner adds an impure sample of sodium carbonate into a flask containing 50 cubic centimeters. So this stuff here is going to have the sodium carbonate. Okay. So this stuff here is going to be Na2CO3. Into a flask containing 50 cubic centimeters, 50 cubic centimeters of HCl, which has a pH 
is zero. The hydrochloric acid is in excess, okay? The balance equation for reaction. Calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so we know that pH equals minus the log of the concentration of H3O plus. Okay, just bear with me for a second. We also know, so we know the pH is zero, right? So we know that zero is equal to minus the log of the H3O plus ions. But then if you, you basically swap it round, you get H3O plus, concentration of H3O plus ions, is equal to 10 to the zero, right? Which equals one. So therefore, the concentration of the hydronium ions is one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, so what was the question again? It says calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid present in the solution. So we know therefore that if this has a number of moles is this year is going to be one mole okay so then it says we therefore hcl has got a concentration of one mole so we got concentration is number of moles over volume the concentration is one the number of moles is what we're trying to find out it says calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid in the volume is going to be 50 cubic centimeters. What's wrong with cubic centimeters? It should be decimeters cubed. So it's going to be 50 times by um, 10 to the negative 3. Therefore, n is going to be 50 times by 10 to the negative. But remember, this is SI unit, so it has to be 5 times by 10 to the negative 2 moles, or 0, 0, 5 moles. Okay, so number of moles of hydrochloric acid present in this flask is 0, 0, 5. A nice question. Right, now let's just erase that stuff there, so this space for us to write. Because then it says, write on the balance equation that explains why sodium carbonate pH has a pH, sodium carbon solution has a pH greater than 7. What are they saying? They want us to write a balanced equation that explains why sodium carbonate solution has a pH greater than 7. Okay, so carbonate is going to be CO3 2 minus. Okay, to the second. Um, okay, so C CO3 2 minus, that's the carbonate. We're going to add water. And it's going to be in dynamic equilibrium with H. CO3 minus plus OH minus. What's happening here is that the carbonate ions is an acidic ion and the water is acting as a base. Is it? No, it's not. The water is acting as an acid. The water is acting as an acid and it's given its hydrogen to the carbonate, which is B2, and this is acid 1. And by giving away its hydrogen, it becomes this dude's base, B2, and no, yeah, B1, B1, sorry. And therefore, this is A2. Okay, now the question reads, so we've done that. The apparatus illustrated below is used during the titration to determine the mass of the sodium carbonate present in the sample. So, first things, write down the name of the apparatus. It is obviously a burette. Okay, this is a burette. This is a conical flask. This is a retort stand. Let me write it in here. Retort stand. Retort stand. Okay, now it says, now it says, what does it say? It says, during the titration, 
excess hydrochloric acid was add, is neutralized by 30 cubic centimeters of 0.4 mole per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, calculate the mass of the sodium hydroxide solution. Calculate the mass of the sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, we can do this. So we've got Na2CO3 plus 2HCl forms 2NaCl plus CO2 plus H2O. Okay, and it says during the tritation there was an excess hydrochloric acid is used to neutralize 30 cubic centimeters of oh no it's a different equation because this is sodium hydroxide okay let's erase the link so in this case it is hcl plus sodium hydroxide right so what does that become it becomes sodium chloride plus h2o let's check the balancing it works okay now it says during the titration, the excess hydrochloric acid is neutralized by 30 cubic centimeters of 0.4 moles per decimeter cube concentration, sodium hydroxide. So it's calculate the mass, they want to know the mass of the sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate. Oh, I see. That's quite a nice question. What they're saying is that the excess hydrochloric acid is neutralized by this, okay? So what we're gonna do is find out how much the HCl was. If we know what that was, then we can work out how much HCl was used, and then we can therefore work out the mass of sodium carbonate in the original sample. Okay, so we know that the volume is 30 cubic centimeters and we know that the number of mole, I mean the concentration is 0.4. What else do we know? We know that um, pH is zero. What do we know? We know that, what did we work out? Balance is straight at K. Okay, what do we know about the hydrochloric acid? We know that it contains 50 cubic centimeters. We're obviously going to subtract some of that. And it has a pH of zero. pH of zero. Um, we know the concentration of the HCl is one mole per decimeter cube. So we can work out the volume. So we can say, and we just need to balance, and this is balanced. I'm just looking at that. Yes, it is balanced. We can say Na is equal to CAVA all over NB is equal to CBVB. Right. So Na is going to be one over one, so it's just one, is equal to the concentration of the acid, which is what we're trying to find out. The volume of the acid, which is one, divided by the concentration of the base, which is 0, 0,4, multiplied by the volume, which is 30 cubic centimeters. That's fine, because they both can be 30 cubic centimeters. So therefore, um, hang on, let me just check something. What am I doing? I don't want the concentration, I want the volume. The concentration is one, this is the volume. Okay, so therefore we can say that one multiplied by 0 0.4 multiplied by 30 is going to give me the volume of the hydrochloric acid. So therefore that's 0 0.4 times 30, so it's 0 0.4 multiplied by 30 is going to be 12. So therefore we can say that the volume of the HCl is going to be 12 cubic centimeters. Okay, so now we know this was the excess, okay? Now it says during the titration, the excess hydrochloric acid is active. So now we know we used 12. Okay, so now that means that we had originally 50 cubic centimeters, but we've got 12 left over. So what did we use in this reaction? Do you agree that we used, we used 50 minus 12, um, cubic centimeters of HCl. So 50 minus 12 is 38. 
So therefore we now know that we have used 38 cubic centimeters of the HDL. And grade 12, that's as far as we're going today. We will carry on with this nice question in the next lesson, which is on Monday. Have a great weekend. Thank <laughs> you.